My name is Joel Maximo, one half of the SAT, the fathers of the style of today, and you are watching the Cheap Wrestler channel. What's going on, guys? I am the cheapest wrestler in the world, Matt Rivera, and this is episode two of how to become a pro wrestler. It's been a little while since we did episode one, which is all about how to prepare for wrestling school. What should you do before you even start training? So if you need to go back to episode one, I'll put the link up here for you guys. Just click that and then come back to this episode, which is all about choosing a wrestling school. How do you pick? How do you know what's good? How do you know what's going to work for you? We're going to talk all about it. And we're also going to meet three head trainers of local wrestling schools around here that I've worked with personally. And uh, we'll answer those questions that you guys might have. So what do you say we get started? We already know who we're starting off with. He kicked off the video. This is Joel Maximo of the SAT. Oh, hey, look who I got with me today, Joel Maximo. Long time no see, brother. How's everything? Long time no see, man. How are you? Doing well, doing well. I got a few questions from the subscribers. You know, they saw us on Extreme Cheapskates, and they were like, <laughs> "How's Joel doing?" We have all these questions for him. So you see, I got two papers full. Wow, let's go. We're gonna get cracking here. So. Bro Chungus wants to know, is there a required age to become a professional wrestler? No, I had I had children in my school that started at five years old. Five yeah. years old. And they badass right now. <laughs> yeah. You hear that? So there's no required age. People as young as five are doing this. Yes. So if you're interested, get started. How long does it fully take to adapt to being a wrestling trainer? Well, it took me 15 years to learn. What I what I teach. So, to be a trainer, you gotta. Have, to me, you have you have to have all the credentials for it. You know, um, before I even opened the school, I have traveled to Mexico, Japan, England, all over the world. So, 15 years. <laughs> 15 years. Eh? That, I mean, that sounds like a good number. That's fair, right? All right. Here, here's a good question. This one's from Time Traveler, who wants to know how long does it take to get used to taking back bumps. Why don't you answer that one, man? <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I don't. I mean, the the feeling of it, the feeling of the it. The feeling, is, the feeling is tough. You know why? Because you could be used to it, right? The first few bumps of the training section, and then the next day over, you don't want to bump. Right. <laughs> so, so I, I don't think you ever get used to it. No, it, it always sucks every time. But <laughs> it's, it's it's part of the job, right? You got to do it. <laughs> Here's another question from Time Traveler who wants to know, what are some key components to cutting a good promo? Well, cutting a good promo, to me, man, would be Time Traveler, uh, would be anything that explains who you are and what you're about to do. It, it should come from here and uh, not from something you read or, or making up. That's, that's what I think. That's fair honesty, right? <laughs> you got you got to do it with conviction. I always felt you got to make people believe what you're saying. Good stuff. Awesome. All right, here's a good one. This one's from Dorothy, who wants to know, what is your weirdest encounter with a fan? My weirdest encounter with a fan? Uh huh. <laughs> oh boy, should I say it? <laughs> uh, you know what? Say it. I had worst a, case scenario. We could cut it. <laughs> we had a we had a plenty of times that has happened to us. We had a. The children watch this? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You can say it if anything, I'll put it in the director's they, cut. They um I had I had I had fans offer us to stay over and become daddies of the house. <laughs> yes. That has happened that's to the Maximo brothers, yes. That's a good PG way to put it. So yeah, that's probably the weirdest thing that you know, I, I always get fans hit, chop me or hit me. That's normal. Um those things though that happens there you go that's the pg version you put it's the pieces pretty... together you guys got it <laughs> we said no <laughs> we said no yeah that's the clarify yeah, we said no <laughs> that's good that's awesome all right let's see what's it good all right this is, this is a great question for you ruler of all do certain styles like strong style and lucha style mix well together so clashing of styles adding different things to your we yes, repertoire absolutely that's what makes wrestling great that like you get um guys from all different type of styles trying to win a match it's, it's amazing there you go i mean and if, if you love your lucha that's me watch him and his brothers they're incredible that's they're amazing and i'm not just trying to blow smoke it, it, you got to check it out you got to check it out he's one of my good friends and student he's gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> he paid me <laughs> 
Uh, ooh, here's another good one. This is Emmett the Lego who wants to know what wrestlers inspired you? Uh, well, this is a good one. Uh, Triple H and Eddie Guerrero. And Big Togo. These are my top three. So it would be Triple H, Eddie Guerrero, and Big Togo. I have to ask, Triple H, why Triple H? His footing, his style, um, his timing in the ring is like none other. Have you ever seen Triple H versus Taka Mishinoku? If you haven't, go see it. Mm. There you that, go. that will explain to you who Triple H really is. That's your homework. You ever saw it? I, you know, I don't think I've ever seen that it's specific good. match. It's I'm gonna, going to. He's going to go see it. Because Triple H is one of my favorites. I think everything he does is incredible. Like timing, everything looks Make, make sure he watches that. May, yeah. <laughs> Both behind the camera. Yes. <laughs> Both of you guys. <laughs> Have you ever been injured? Yes. I um, broke my ankle doing a moonsault against the Briscoe Brothers in Maryland in 2004. I hit the guardrail. And I got this baby right here. And that was, um, the rope broke and I went to, I almost fell out of the ring and I put my hand out and I crushed my own elbow. But that's it, I mean, I'm lucky compared to other wrestlers. But that's it, that's no biggie. Don't be scared, <laughs> that, that only happens to a few. You know, a lot of ta I know a taxi driver that got into 10 accidents, so. That's what I said, it's more dangerous to drive a car, right? <laughs> it's more likely you'll get hurt. Oh, here's a, here's a really good one. This one's from Spencer Hyde, who wants to know, if you were not a wrestler, what would you be doing? Inventing things. Actually, go to bandphones.com and check out my headphones. I invented them. That's what I do. Doesn't matter if he's wrestling or if he's doing something else, he's always innovating. Innovating, S-A-T. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. Yes, sir. <laughs> great, great, great. This one's from Verg Malone. How difficult is it to get booked? Um, for some people, it's very hard. For, for us, it wasn't because uh, we started um, doing pro wrestling shows after two years of training. And um, when we got released to the wrestling world, uh, we brought out a different style, which um, made it impossible for us not to get booked. We were like wrestling from Sunday to Sunday. Make sure you do something that guarantees you can't be ignored, right? That's right. Stand out. Stand out. Like the cheapest wrestler alive. Penny pinching all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, I appreciate your time, appreciate you. man. Thank you. This is the man right here, Joel Maximo, the SAT, innovators of the style of today. If you don't know, now you know. Go check him out. Here we go. Time to make change. <laughs> we love that time to make change thing. Appreciate it. Where, where's your shirts? Where's my shirt? Now, when you're looking for wrestling schools, the very first thing that you're going to think about is location. Yes, location. Where is the school located? How am I going to get to it? To be honest, it's not like the grocery store. There's a good chance that the local wrestling school isn't five minutes down the road, 10 minutes down the road. It might be like a good hour drive. I'm used to driving an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. If I'm lucky, 45 minutes for a wrestling school. But be prepared for at least an hour drive. And how are you going to get there? Do you have a car? Do you have to take a bus, a train? Location is key. Now if you're curious on how you're going to find these wrestling schools, the internet is a wonderful thing. Just search it on Google, wrestling schools near me, maybe put your state in and see what pops up. Nowadays there's lots of options, so see what works best for you. Crikey, we're here at Spartan Championship Wrestling. This is my terrible accent. Let's take a look at what's inside. Now the second trainer that's going to be answering your question is Kareem West from yeah, Spartan Championship Wrestling. So let's see what Professor West has to say about your questions. So uh, a couple years ago, I can't even remember what year it was to be honest, maybe like 2010 or something like that. I stopped, I started in 2007 and just like my body was aching. So it was, it was, it was time to take a break and I took a very, very long break, uh, probably like six, seven years, so yeah, it was, but I did stop, and now I feel great though. Have I ever gotten hurt in the ring? Yes, absolutely. Oh, my very first match, I chipped the tooth, uh, you know, somebody was throwing a clothesline, I tried to duck it, but I didn't really duck it, and yeah, I got, I got hurt. I've had a ladder match and uh, hurt my, my bicep, but nothing crazy, I haven't really torn any muscles or anything like this, a little chip of a tooth, you know, teeth are overrated anyway, so. Honestly, wrestling in front of the crowd is, is an experience that you cannot explain. Um, you may be nervous right before, like in the back, you're getting ready, you're going over your, your you know, the match in your head, you, you know, you're putting on your gear, but the 
moment you step out and see the, the fans and you know they're either cheering you or booing you or whatever it is pretty cool everything that all that all that nervous jitters and just goes right away and you just your goal is to just put on the best quality entertainment we are back talking about three things that you need to think about when choosing a wrestling school. The first was location, and the second is price. Now, you know that's a big deal for me. Now, wrestling schools back in the day, they can run you for $3,000, $2,000, but things have changed. Things have changed a lot. You might pay per month, maybe $150, that's a decent price. $100 is a decent price. You might be able to actually go to a wrestling school for free, essentially, if maybe you help set up the rings, if you do shows for free, maybe you help clean the place. So you can really find different options about what's affordable for you and what works within your budget. But you might have to shop around. You might need to shop around, ask around, do your research and find out what fits you, your needs and your budget. We're here in the offices of East Coast Professional Wrestling. I'm about to sit down right now with Gino Caruso, head trainer and owner of the whole operation and pick apart his brain. What does it take to become a professional wrestler? What is it like to be a trainer? We want to answer your questions and that starts right now. This question is from Time Traveler who wants to know approximately how long does it take to get used to taking back bumps? Never, no. Um, you know what, usually after the first couple weeks new students will start to um, get used to it a little bit, you know, the body adjusts to it, it's like anything else. And once you do something, if you go to a workout, weights, and you haven't worked out before, after a couple weeks or so, your body will adjust to it. So, usually a couple weeks. Is listening or playing to the crowd during promos a good way to perform a promo? Uh, yeah, it's always good to engage the crowd. It's always good. I mean, that's what, you know, professional wrestling is. It's, uh, it's you know, not just the moves, the athletics part of it. It has to be some type of showmanship. It has to be a characterization. You have to make a connection, an emotional connection with the fans. Have you ever gotten hurt in the ring? Oh, yes, many times. Yeah. Broken bones, dislocated, torn rotator cuffs, concussions, stitches. Whole nine. Yeah. <laughs> what got you into wrestling? You know, I was a fan when I was a kid, and uh, you know, watching it at the time was WWF, and um, you know, I did amateur wrestling all through high school, and college, and uh, just knew that at one time I was going to go out and try this. What would you do if you weren't a wrestler? Well, I mean, I, I I'm also a personal trainer, so I'm a certified personal trainer, so I really enjoy doing that. Like, you know, I've been doing that for a number of years, but I got my degree actually in animal science. So when I went to college, I, I got a degree in animal science. So probably would have done uh, chosen that field if I didn't get into wrestling. Well, I definitely did not know that. <laughs> hey, the more you know, cool. Now we just deal with different animals. That's right, right, different type of animal. <laughs> uh, and this question, I think, is especially good specifically for you. Okay. Uh, this is from Verg Malone, who wants to know, how difficult is it to get booked for shows? Uh, just in general? In general. Yeah, you know what? I think there's a lot more wrestlers. There's a lot more guys now than it used to be. You know, when I first broke in, we saw the same group of guys at most of the shows. Uh, it's a lot easier to break into the wrestling business now. There's a lot more places around, so I think it's, it's probably more difficult in that aspect. But the good thing is that you have social media you connect with a lot of people. So you can get your, um, your name out there to a lot more people now because of the social media. So, but it is difficult, especially in the beginning. If you don't know the person, like, it's kind of hard. You know, they, you have to, you know, advice would be show up at the shows. Like, that's what I did when I first started, when I wasn't booked, I'd show up at the shows and ask the promoter, Aaron, if you need any help, I'm here. I got my stuff. And just help him out. And he knows you're there. And after a while, showing up and doing that, they say, you know, let's give this guy a try. Right. They know that you're serious about it. Absolutely. That's a great answer. That's great advice for anybody who's up and coming in the professional wrestling world. Gino Caruso has been doing this for over 30 years, right? Just recently yeah. at the mark? Yeah, 33 years. 33 years. Wow. And uh, East Coast Pro Wrestling, uh, not counting during the pandemic. I mean, you 
running shows pretty much every weekend. Yeah, normally, obviously, 2020 was a strange year for all of us, but um, we do anywhere from 80 to 90 live events a year. Whew. And we've been here for 30 years. I definitely don't think anybody is doing that, at least not on the Northeast scene. Yeah, I mean, we try to keep busy, um, you know, because we've been doing it for so long. We have a really good group of uh, people that we work with as fundraisers for different schools and organizations. And we just keep going back to them and keep adding to them. We've talked about location, we've talked about price. Now the third and final thing that you need to think about when choosing a pro wrestling school is reputation. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by reputation? Visit the school. Do you like the way the trainer runs a session? Maybe he's a jerk. Maybe he's not someone that you'd like to work with. Maybe you learn in a certain way and he doesn't fit what you need. Ask around, ask other wrestlers. Maybe, maybe hit somebody up that goes to a wrestling school that you know. Maybe you know some independent wrestlers that go to some schools that you're interested in. Ask, ask around. I mean, you need to think about safety precautions. You need to think about if the way they teach fits the way you learn. You need to think about, oh, maybe this guy used to work for WWE and I wanna work for WWE one day. So having a head trainer who's actually been there and done the job might be what you're looking for. Maybe you're just looking for somebody who really does well on the independent scene. Maybe you're looking for somebody who has a certain style, who teaches lucha. You know, these are all things that you really, really need to think about. So the third and final thing is reputation. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the cheapest wrestler in the world, Matt Rivera, and this is How to Become a Pro Wrestler, a series that takes the, the journey of how to become a professional wrestler step by step. And on the next episode, episode three, it's time for me to step back into the ring. Time to make change. Next time on How to Become a Pro Wrestler, Matt Rivera returns to the wrestling ring for the first time in years. Will he be a success or a complete botch? Find out on the next episode of How to Become a Pro Wrestler. You know I've got to give a special shout out to the Frugal Faction. Are you ready for the cheap wrestler to return to the ring? Then you've got to get the latest gear. I've partnered with Redbubble to bring you guys the dopest merch, including a brand new line of Time to Make Change shirts, masks, cell phone cases, backpacks. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And these all come in classic cheap wrestler graphics too. Don't be second rate. Get your merch today. Click that link in the description. Let's go. Penny figure thoughts ain't worth the price When the rent is high, knock out your lights Proving in seconds, oozing electric feels like class. School is in session Saved by the bell, yeah I'm on fire Blazing in hell, save your career Rather save on a sale, stuck behind bars Making no bail, no bail. I cashed in Attraction, numero uno Action, brutal, faction, frugal I'm the sh, your matches doodle